they call it IFR, instrument flight rules, and the VFR pilots can't go. You gotta wait till they get above a thousand at least, be marginal. And then still they're supposed to stay clear of the clouds, you know, you just yeah. can't go flying through there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll wind up flying upside down, that's what happens sometimes. I can't believe it. Nobody can believe it. They're like, how do you fly in right side up and fly out upside down? They don't even notice it. It just starts to roll over and this intrinsic force makes it feel like you're still being pulled down in the airplane, even though it's upside down. And they don't, they they don't, don't look it. at the attitude indicator? Yeah, somehow they omit it. That's it. You have to omit certain instruments to not catch it. Uh -huh. If you're scanning, you know it. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Always trust your instruments. That's what we teach. Right. Yeah, sometimes people just don't work. They get to thinking about something else and then so you remind yourself I haven't scanned the instruments in a minute So yeah. I got to go back to scanning again. So you got to catch it yourself or somebody else. Okay. How do you how do you scan? Um... I look around I go around like a racetrack. Yeah, yeah, okay Some people do like a spokes of the wagon wheel They'll they'll start in the middle look at the attitude indicator and then they'll go look at the alt altimeter or the airspeed or the heading or the turn and slip coordinator and they always come back to the middle they just go out like spokes okay you know, but it's easy to go around in a racetrack do you uh do you spend most of the time looking out and then come back and when you're vfr and, yeah you're yeah. supposed to look outside and then peek inside and then when you're on instruments you can't see outside so all you can see is what's on the panel yeah yep and the instruments, or the, the engine instruments, you don't want to forget those. Every 15 minutes or so, you want to check your instruments and make sure that the engine's not overheating. Yeah, I saw... Uh, I've had that happen before. The little package that I bought had... Um, it has... What do they have? Uh, those foggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are... Yeah, we've got some, I think. Those are interesting. They borrowed them. Yeah, there's some back here for instrument. Oh, that's not them. Here they are. So what you do is you put these on, or you wear yours and you can fly along without seeing outside is easy. You can still peek out. You can look down on the side over there, but people notice when you raise your head up, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, you're peeking. <laughs> yeah, I can tell all the yeah. time if people think they're getting away with it, they're like, I can't see anything. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you can. <laughs> all right, so to get ready to start it, we use the checklist. Okay. I'm, I printed rich. that out too. All right, yep, yeah. mixture's rich, carburetor heats cold, ignition on, master on that's that red one there yep. and then you want to look around make sure nobody's out there and they say clear prop and then hit the starter if you wanted to prime it you could prime it and it'll start easier if you have trouble starting it that means you probably don't have any fuel in it and it's just just turning over boom 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 but it never tries so give it a shot of this primer or okay. two in the winter time it takes a couple of shots of primer i'd give it three good shots of primer and i leave the primer out whenever i'm starting it in the winter time i'll give it a shot of primer while i'm starting it really that just gives it an extra little bump yeah okay yeah so it starts up easier now this one will fire right up in the summertime i'm gonna hit that starter right there are you ready altitude you just said it we missed it or if you don't have the weather at the airport that you're at you just set it to the field elevation like springdale is 1350. it's really going to come in a little bit higher than that though it only shows 1400 down here yeah. I don't know why. We're lower than the airport terminal, and it says 1352 in front of it. Yeah. Yep. Sky condition clear below 12,000. Yeah, those are way up there. Then. Four Celsius. Dew point two four Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero one inches of mercury. There it is. Density altitude three one. Spring to sour some of the fuel across the. So now we're listening and talking on one. We were listening and talking, and then also listening to two. We were talking and listening to one, but then we just monitored two. Yep. The top one is the speaker or the headphones. The bottom one is if you want to talk on it. Zero. Okay. And then we're on the frequency that we want, 118.2. If you had to set your heading, you could set it to the compass here or on the runway, but we don't have to anymore. We've got this G5. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got your four flight on. I always remember to hit start on the timer over here. Hit record, okay. yeah, and that will save the tra the track and everything. You can come back and look at it later. At the end, it'll save it with your logbook. Oh, really? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit record, and then I also use that for the time in the airplane. That always helps. I'm gonna go ahead and taxi up a little bit. I'm using my feet to steer. You want to go ahead and put your feet up there where you can reach the pedals. And I have my heels on the floor, and I'm touching the bottom of the pedals or the middle. 
and the bottom. And then if I want to stop, I put them up on the tops. Okay. Like after I land, I'll raise them up and start hitting the brakes a little bit to slow down or to turn. Clear on the right, clear on the left. Yep, we're just looking for traffic. You have to monitor this road by yourself, but the active taxiway and the runway, the tower controls it from 6 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. Yep. I'm pushing on that right pedal there to keep a, the nose straight or, or turn to the right a little bit if I need to and try to stay on this yellow line and it takes you as fast as you can walk. You're going to start doing this. Okay. Yep. Yep. There's no wind, really. Just a little bit looking at the wind socks. So I'm going to do the run up here before I call him. We make sure the flight controls are free and clear. We walked around there and we pulled on him, and we would have noticed if there was something catching. You would have felt it out there when you were yeah. raising or lowering. And so we're looking. You can see the right aileron goes up whenever I turn towards the right. That's because that aileron pushes that wing down. Whichever way your thumb's pointing is the one that goes on up. Back on ramp with the weather, we would like to fly following the east practice area, and we are ready to take The elevator, I can see it out this right side. You can see it out your left side, the elevator in the back going up and down. Yep, flaps work. We already checked them on the ground, but we're going to check them again before we take off. That's all in the pre-takeoff checklist. Yep. And then I'm going to do the run-up. I'm going to run it up to 1,700 RPMs and check the magnetos. It should drop about 50 to 100 RPMs and then 50 within the two. It could drop as much as 125. That just shows that that's working. If you pulled one magneto off, you're only turning half of the cylinder or half of the spark plugs are, are getting ignited. The other half is off. So if both of them are going, you get more combustion. Yeah, normally, unless yep. one of them's bad. All right, so we'll go ahead and call them up. And it's Springdale Tower, 647 Bravo. Is that the T-Hanger is ready to tax you with the weather? We'd like to stay in the pattern. Cessna 647 Bravo, Springdale Tower, runway 36, taxi via Alpha. 36 via Alpha, 87 Bravo. So we're just going to stay in the pattern today. We're going to do some takeoffs and landings. And yeah, we're taking off on 36. Yep, yep. Yep. And then we'll do your student pilot's license next time. Okay. Yep. I've got another person. Uh, I've got to run and take the RV up to Springdale RV today. I've got an appointment at 9 o'clock, so I have to dash off. But if you want to do it tomorrow, we can, or okay. Friday, whatever is good for you. Thursday or Friday. I think, I think I've got it all filled out. I just, oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just got to sign it. Okay, yeah. send me your federal tracking number, that okay. Alpha or Charlie, whatever, then the eight or nine digits. Yep. yep. Good. And it's Freedom Tower, 6.7 Bravo, holding short in 3.6. Cessna 8.7 Bravo, in your left traffic, runway 3.6, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 3.6, Bravo. Okay. Yep. I don't even use the brakes. Unless you're doing a short field takeoff, you don't have to use the brakes. I notice a lot of people, they get out here and they line up and they hold. You don't have to do that. Okay. Yep. Unless you're trying to use all the available runway, if it's a short runway, then you taxi over to the edge. You hold your brakes and you get it full throttle. And then when you yeah, release right. it, you kind of get an alert or you jump off the ground. So when we get lined up here, I'm using my feet to hold it on the runway. It takes a little bit of right pressure because of the left turning tendencies of the airplane. Yep, I'm just going to push on that right one to keep it in the center. When we get up to 60 miles an hour, we're going to pull back just a little bit. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. Yeah, just pull back a little bit until we rotate and we keep our wings level. So we should take right off here when we start flying. Yep, I'm going to put a little back pressure on there. And I take the pressure off using that trim wheel. The plane just take off uh, by itself. Okay. You, you can just put a little back pressure on there and it'll take off when you get to the right airspeed. We speed up to 75 to 85. Good morning, Tower 86 West Michigan South on Alpha from the terminal. A6 Tower, good morning. Proceed south on Alpha. If it looks tower like it's going to rain, a lot of times it's better just to stay here in the pattern and practice your takeoffs and yep. landings. If it does start to rain or it gets dark and cloudy, you can always land. You just say, that'll be it. This is it for today. This will be the last one. I don't know if it's going to rain or not. It's not supposed to until later on. But it gets dark sometimes. And when you can't see the ground, you can't be flying. Yeah. Yep. So when we get up to 1,900 feet or 2,000 feet, we're going to turn left. Yep. Crosswind. I have the yep. crosswind turn on the, on the crosswind in the pattern. And then downwind. And then base. And then final. Yep.
That's it. And if you haven't heard anything from him, by the time you get down there to base, we'll call him up and say, we're turning left base. And then he'll say, you'll clear the land. Yeah. Yeah. You can request the option if you want to yeah. do a touch and go, or if you want to taxi back, you just say, I'm ready to land. Okay. Yeah. If he gives you that option, you can always stop anyway. You can do anything. Yeah, it looks kind of dark back there in the north. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Out. There's all the rain up there. So we start left turning now? Uh -huh. Yeah, do your left turn at 2,000 or 1,900 feet. You can start your left turn. It's usually right out here about the same place over this highway that goes out to the lake. Okay. That's two, uh, it's a wagon wheel road off to your left there, that d divided highway. Uh, I think that's it. And then you'll turn left again, downwind, about a mile away. It's usually over the Highway 71 or somewhere between 71 and the bypass. Anywhere out here is good. Okay. We try to try to pick a mile away so you get used to that, what a mile looks like. Yeah, 1,000 feet above the ground. We're going to level off here at 2350 or 2400, 2300, somewhere around there. All right. And I pull the power back a little bit because we can stop our climb. Okay. Good. That's it, about 2000 or 2200. Go ahead and start your left turn. This is the downwind. Now, if you took off with the headwind, then this is the opposite direction. Sometimes if you take off with the crosswind, though, there really isn't a headwind. It's just crosswind or maybe a little bit of a headwind. Yeah. Yep, we're going to level off here, so you pull your nose down a little bit or push your nose down a little bit. And we're going to level off. Yep. You can see that the dot on the horizon, that artificial line back there, you can also see your altimeter there. Yep. And you can see the vertical speed. If it's magenta, it means that you're descending or climbing. Yep. Good. Greendale Tower, Skyhawk 2819, Quebec, holding short of runway 36, ready to take off. Skyhawk 2819, Quebec, runway 36, cleared for takeoff, right turn out of Yeah, he's going out to the east, so he's not going to be a factor. Sometimes you'll get two or three planes in the pattern, all taking off and landing simultaneously, so you just have to keep track. There's a guy following us, or there's a guy in front of us. And the tower can extend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's, if he's getting ready to land and you're too close, they'll say, extend your downwind. That means yeah. you just keep on going. Good. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that until they hear it a couple of times. Cessna 87 Bravo, extend downwind. I'll call your base turn. We're extending downwind, 87 Bravo. Yep. That's the white that you're using? Yeah. Uh, the white button is to push to talk. Yep. And you just, just hold it in while you're talking, just like any other handheld microphone. Yep. Yep. And they used to have one. A lot of them still do have an old handheld microphone hanging somewhere. And they had a speaker. You know, it's hard yep. to hear a speaker in the airplane with the engine going and everything. Yep. Oh, you're looking good. Altitude's good. So if he didn't extend my downwind, this is about when I would start. You can look. I, actually, bit. actually, yeah, you can start your descent now when you're beam the numbers. Yeah. And then uh, about a mile out, you'll start your turn a little bit before that for base. Yeah, he said extend, though. We're going to keep going straight until he calls us because okay. that guy's sitting on the runway for some reason. He stopped. I don't know why they do that. They stop. <laughs> you're not supposed to stop. We should still stay at pattern altitude while yeah. we do it. Yeah. Yep, stay at 2400, 2300. Good. Yeah, I would. And then start your descent whenever you turn base. Whenever he tells you that you can turn base, then we'll start our descent. Okay. We can lose 500 of the 1,000 on base and then 500 on final. Or you can wait until you get on final. Since we're this far out, we can lose the whole 1,000 feet. 36, proceed on runway 36 northbound. Thank you, sir. Proceeding now. Oh, that's what they're waiting on. Yeah, we may have to keep going for a while. So stage 7 Bravo, start your base. Left base for 87 Bravo. So have you talked on the radio before? Are you a ham radio operator or did you serve in the military? No, I, uh, I just used that Pilot Edge app on the, okay. on the simulator. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about that. They're getting ATC from the simulator. That's great. I like that. Yep, this is Lake Fayetteville. Yeah. It gives you like a two or three mile final almost. Yep. Now normally we turn over that Tyson Parkway. That's another divided highway going east and west. And when you get to it, usually you can turn your base or you can turn your crosswind if you took off on 1-8. 
Does he call final now, or do we go? No, we're good. He okay. cleared us to land. Or okay. No, he, he said we could turn base. He hadn't cleared us to land yet. Okay. But we are cleared to, to go all the way to the runway, but we can't touch down until he tears us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to turn final, and then hopefully he'll tell us. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. Well. You can start turning slowly. Uh -huh. It's better to turn a little early, and then if you need to, you can take some bank angle out. Before you proceed south on Alpha. The truck's looking for a point. Eight seven Bravo runway three six cleared for the option. Cleared for the option three six eight seven Bravo. Yeah, that guy's going to get scared. So we're going through our final checklist. Seat belts on, gas on both, mixture rich, carburetor heat on, landing lights on, flaps and power as desired. We're going to pull the power back a little bit. We're going to start our descent down. About 500 feet per minute is good. That magenta line should be about halfway down to the 10. Okay. Yep. If you're low, like we've got four red ones now, we're going to slow our descent down and we're going to wait until we capture two light balls or two white lights. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to hold our altitude here and then we'll see one white light and then another one come in. That means we're on the glide slope of three degrees pitch down. You held the altitude with more power? You can add a little bit more power if you want to. I'm just holding my airspeed right here. I'm using the pitch. We've okay. got enough power in there. I think we could just hold Seven it. Seven fuel tower. Yep, a little bit over to the right. Summit fuel, proceed north on Bravo. Hold short of runway 36, Bravo 4. Yep, a little bit more to the right. If we need to, we'll add some power. Matrix clear. Yeah, if we get down to 70, I'll add power to keep it. There's our two oh, yeah. white lights we're looking for. Now, here's the glide slope that we were looking for. We've got one red. We want two red, but we're just a little bit high. We've got one extra ball. There we go. Okay. Two red and two white. And about 500 feet per second. And now I'm going to go back to the left and line up down the runway. Okay. Yep. At this point, you can disregard those lights. Okay. Pretty much we're so close now, we're just going to land the airplane. We're going to make sure we've got our flaps in 30 percent, 30 degrees. There's 10, 20, 30 degrees. Okay. You're aiming to level off at the numbers? Yep. When we get to the airport, I'm going to level off and fly parallel to the ground. That's the round out. And then as it starts to come down, we're going to flare. Flare by just pulling back a little bit more. If you pitch up just a little bit, you get more lift. But if you get too much, you're going to actually start to float. Okay. Yep. There we go. That's what we wanted. Just a nice little touchdown around 50 or 60 miles an hour. We're trying for 60, but it may go a little bit slower than that. When you flare, it'll start slowing down okay. even more. Yeah. So we're going to turn off here. 87 Bravo, like to taxi back. Cessna 87 Bravo, left turn Alpha 4, taxi runway 36 V Alpha. Taxi 36 V Alpha, 87 Bravo. So you want to start steering. Summit fuel yep. cross runway 36 Bravo 4. Yep. There's a nice airplane. Bravo 4, some of you. Yep. Once we Sir, cross. Yeah, serious. Uh -huh. Carbon fiber. So I'm going to take the flaps off. Carburetor heat cold, landing lights off. You could have stopped there to do that, but I knew the fuel truck's crossing behind me, so I just kept on rolling. Okay. And now you're steering with your feet again. Uh huh. There you go. Yep, you're going to start doing it. Oh, yeah, I was charging up this other iPad. So you're steering with your feet. If you need to, you can cross your hand, arms or sit on your hands. Everybody likes to drive yeah, because that's what they've been doing. So you gotta gotta forget that. You gotta remind yourself, I'm driving with my feet. Yep, I'm driving with my feet. If okay. the rudders are even, then your nose is straight. If you feel like you're pushing one side to the other more than the other one, it'll be turning that way a little bit. And then, of course, if you want to just, just slowly turn a little bit to the right, you could tap the brake. Now we're going to go straight okay. down to the end, and then we're going to take off again. Uh -huh. okay. Yep, we're just going to take off some landings, and they call that a full stop taxi back. If you were to go over to Huntsville, they don't have a taxiway, so you back taxi on the runway. That's a difference. Yep. You taxi back on the taxiway, but you back taxi on the runway. Okay. 87 Bravo, holding short at 1-8, or, or 3-6. Cessna 87 Bravo in our left traffic, runway 36 cleared for takeoff. Left traffic cleared for takeoff 36, 87 Bravo. Yep. So really all you have to do is just say we're cleared to take off 36. They want you to repeat that back to them. Yep. Springdale Tower, Cirrus 312, Alpha Echo with the weather. That's the Bravo guy in the FBO. FBO. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's that Cirrus. So we're going to line up Cirrus on it. 312, Alpha Echo, Springdale Tower, runway 36. Hold that right rudder yeah. steady. Give it okay. full throttle. 36, taxi yep. Push it all the way in. And if you want to, you can even tighten that friction lock to hold it in. Yep. You're steering with your feet. That's it. If there was a crosswind, you'd have your, your 
wings into the wind, your thumbs okay. into the wind. Yep, there's 60, so start pulling back just a little bit on it. The airplane takes off, push over a little bit, let it speed up to 75. Then yep. start pulling back up? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. then you pitch for the airspeed that you want, 75 okay. or 80. Yeah. If it's going 90, you can pull back a little bit and slow it down and climb faster, like 85 miles an hour. Okay. Your best climb is really 91, but we, we pitch for 65 or 75 to 85. Okay. The best angle of climb, yeah, what's your airspeed now? We don't want to go below 70, right? We want to keep it up there around 75. Okay. Good. And you do that with the pitch? Uh -huh. You're pitching okay. for the airspeed. Okay. Push forward, you speed up, pull back, you slow down. Good. Yeah, takeoff's easy. It's just a reverse of landing. Instead of touching down, you're going to climb out slowly. Yeah. But the same airspeed, so you're coming in 75 to 85, and you touch down at 60. You, you climb out 75 to 85, but you lift off at 60. It's just a reverse. And we practice flying over the runway. That way, if the wind's blowing you, you get a little bit more practice when you're taking off. It's just a reverse of landing. So you're practicing holding it over the runway. Yeah. If you're landing, you've got to hold it over the runway. Yep. If something happened on takeoff, you could land on the runway again. We practiced that. We said, oh, you lost your engine. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to set it right back on the runway. Yeah. That's why we keep over it. Yep. And, and you start your left turn. Uh-huh. Yeah, just about the same place every time right out here. It's going to be a shallow turn. What's your airspeed? We want to keep our airspeed up over 75 or 80. Deep back pressure. Uh-huh. Push forward a little forward. bit to slow it to, to speed up. Yeah. Yeah, we want to slow the climb down. But you do have to pull back a little bit, usually. Whenever you're turning, if you don't pull back a little bit, you'll start losing altitude. I'm going to pull the power back a little bit to like 2,200 or 2,000, somewhere in there. Yep. When you get to 23 or 2,400, you're going to level off and fly level. All right. Yeah. Yep, this is our crosswind, getting ready to turn downwind. You can go ahead and start your turn. All right. Yeah, so, and then keep an eye on the runway. We want to stay about a mile away, and you're getting that practice going level off here. We don't want to climb anymore. Yep. When we get going south, look over at the runway and say, oh, that's about a mile. Okay. Yep. So you're, you're learning to, to get that picture. It's like looking through the rifle at the scope. Yep, you're still climbing a little bit. So, so turn down, down maybe? Yeah, or? yeah push down a little bit. Three sticks, ready for departure. There you go. Right turn out, please. Yeah, see that purple line? Yeah. I was telling you, you're climbing a little bit. Echo, you'll see it, six, you'll see it here right or here before you'll see it on the altimeter. Yeah. It tells you what's going to happen in a minute. If you don't change in a minute, it's going to be 200 feet higher or, yeah. or 100 feet higher. Yeah, there you go. Level off, push your nose down just a little bit. You'll get used to what that level looks like, too, by looking around more. Cessna 87 Bravo, runway 36, cleared for the option. Cleared for the option, 3687 Bravo. Yeah, not too bad today. Might get rough this afternoon, I bet. We have that th thunderstorm or whatever. So we're pointed this way, but going that way because of the wind. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's changing your direction. You're crabbing. You're flying sideways like a crab walking on the beach. So since he cleared us for the option, we're ready to turn base. Yeah, you can turn base whenever you want. And okay. then, yeah, when you look back and the airport's 45 degrees behind you, that's about a mile if you're a okay. thousand feet up. Yeah. That's what I do. Yep. And then we'll pull the power back to 1,700. Whenever you're ready to turn base, you can yep. turn base. Yep. That's the first thing I do. You do flaps on base or flaps no, on final? I, I do it on final, but okay. you could put in 10 degrees now. You want to make sure you're going below 100 miles an hour and you're next to that white okay. line there. But, yeah, you could put in 10 degrees now or wait till you get on final and put them all in. I put them all in when I know I've got the airport made. Yeah. But it is good to practice putting the flaps in. Like some people do the checklist three times. They'll do it downwind, base, and final. That gives you more time to, to rehearse it. You'll remember it quicker by rehearsing it more often. Yeah. Say, uh, seat belts on, gas on both, mixture rich, carburetor heat on, landing lights on. Flaps and power as desired. That's all that's on the checklist. And you can memorize that. It's easy. Memorize the takeoff and the landing checklist. Sure, yeah, echo frequency change approved. Have a good day. Well, we've we'll yeah. pulled the power back. That's why we're... That's why we're losing thing. altitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. without gaining airspeed. Uh-huh. We start final now? Or? You can start turning a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's better to start a little bit early. You can always take some bank angle out, but if you start too late, you may overshoot it. So that's why we start a little bit early. And our glide slope's right. We've got two red and two white. 
altitude now all red. Yeah, it looks like they're all red. So we're just we're at the bottom of it. So hold your altitude here. I wouldn't descend anymore if you want to. Just wait until you get two of those white lights to come back in. Okay. Yep. And we're watching our airspeed. If you need to have one hand on the throttle because you may need to add power. Okay. Good. That's it. Yeah. Now you can start your descent now. Oh, I thought you could. I saw two red ones there. there for, or two two white ones there for a second. Yeah. Watch your airspeed. We don't want to go too slow. Push your nose down or add power or both. Push your nose down. Yeah. There you go. Not too much. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, that's what I do. I come in at 80. I cross the runway at 70 and touch down at 60. I'm looking at the windsock. The lights means that we're just a little bit low. And the runway. I look at the windsock, the runway, and my airspeed. Make when, sure. When are you flapping? Yeah, you can put in the flaps now. We know we've got it made. Okay. 10, 20, 30. No, you can't keep oh, pulling back oh, on yeah. it. You're going to keep your descent going. Okay. Yeah, and once you put the flaps in, you've got to push down a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it always takes power when you put the flaps in. It slows you way down. Yeah, I see that. So we're going to round out here. We're going to hold it off the runway. And I just keep pulling back, just pulling back, and it slows you down a little bit at a time until you touch down as smooth as you can. And then you're steering with your feet again. You're idle now? I'm at idle. Yeah, that's okay. the only way you can touch down is at idle. Okay. If you've got any power at all, you'll just hover over the runway really slow. Okay. Yep, so eventually you got to pull that power all the way down. You could drive onto the ground with a little bit of power, but you've got to push down on it to get it there. And then we're going to push on the left rudder. Left rudder. There you go. Yeah. Cessna 87 Bravo, runway 36, taxi via Alpha. 36 via Alpha, 87 Bravo. Yep. Keep on going until you cross that double yellow line. You're driving with your feet. Uh-huh. Cross that double yellow line. Keep going. And then you stop. Once you cross the railroad tracks, or whatever you want to call them here, this is the actual taxiway now. We're off the runway. Take the flaps off. Flaps off. Carburetor heat cold and landing lights off. Carburetor heat cold, landing lights All the way to the left. There's one more over there. There you go. Oh, That's it. There we go. And then taxi down to the runway. Three, six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll I want notice to use my hands. I uh, know everybody does. So cross your arms. Yep, pull a little bit of power out. We don't want to taxi any faster than you can walk. Pull power out. There you go. That's good. Now you'll notice uh, when you stop and you've got the nose wheel turned to the left or the right, it's like having the brakes on. It's hard to get rolling again. So we try to position the nose straight whenever we stop. Okay. Yep. It's spring loaded. So once you stop, you can't get it to straighten out again until you start rolling a little bit. And then whenever you start to turn, it always slows you down. So I add a little bit of power. After I slow down and I start to turn, I slow down going into the turn, but then I speed up coming out of it. Okay. Yeah, you'll get used to it after a while. We want to go a little bit slower, just as fast as you can walk. And that's until you get used to it. That's, that's yeah. pretty much until you get your private license. They'll say that taxi as fast as you can walk. But then after you get that, people are always in a hurry. You know, they're yeah. like, I got to go. I, I don't have time for this. 87 Bravo, hold short, 36. Cessna 87 Bravo, enter left traffic, runway 36, clear for takeoff. Enter left traffic, 87 Bravo. I should have said, yeah, clear for takeoff, 36. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting it. Slow down a little bit under the turn. Line up on the center line. Whenever you're ready, you'll give it full throttle. Hold that right foot. I always plant that right foot and then adjust it as I need it. If it starts going to the left, I push a little bit. If it starts going to the right, okay. I just plant it. I just hold it there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't push on it. I just hold it. Okay. I right, give it full throttle. All the way in. A little bit of left rudder. You want to take some off of that right. There you go. Yeah. I just add the right if I need it. And at 60, we rotate. Uh -huh. At 60, start pulling back. You want to keep your wings level. And let it speed up to 75. That's the ground effect. Uh -huh. That's the ground effect. You don't have any parasite drag. There's no drag on the winds on the, the surface of the airplane. That's called parasite drag. All right, so 75, and then we start climbing. Yeah, yeah. yeah climb out 75 to 85. So you let it speed up to 75, and then anything extra than that, you can pull back. Yeah, yep. Yeah, if you had to dodge an obstacle at the end of the runway, they always say there's a 50-foot obstacle on the short runways. Then you want to climb out at 68. Yeah. There, you'll go better there. You you control that with 
the pitch. Yes, yes. Sir. Good morning. Yep. Station 55, Bravo Tango. Yeah, pitch for your airspeed, power for altitude. Both of them are responsible, but when you've got full throttle in there, the only thing you can adjust is the pitch. So that's how you do it on takeoff. And on landing, when you pull the power all the way out, or if you lost your engine, it's the same thing. All you can do is control the pitch. Yeah. If something happened and you lost your flaps, you can land without flaps. You can push the airplane sideways through the air. They call it a forward slip, and that would allow you to slow down so you could descend. If you lost your rudder, you can still steer with the ailerons. If you lost the ailerons, you can still steer with the rudder. You've still got some control, no matter what happens. We used to think about that. I used to think about that. I was like, what would happen if I lost this or lost that? If you lost the throttle, you know, you're going to land wherever, somewhere close. Yeah. Sometimes they have a runaway throttle. There was one guy, I remember reading about this uh, airplane, he said there was something wrong with the cable for the throttle, and it was full throttle. He couldn't pull it out. So he had to turn the engine off when he got ready to land. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, so now we're Good. just about pattern up. Uh -huh. Yep, and start your left turn downwind. You want to wait till after 71? Or? Yeah, yeah, you can do it either way. I usually am right over 71, but you can be a little further out. Yep. Yep, and level off. Yep, I can pull the power back a little bit more. I like okay. to pull it back to like 2200 or 2000 RPM yeah. over here. There you go. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, 71 makes a little jog up here. By the Y liquor store, I think. <laughs> Yeah, that looks right. Yep. And you can use that trim wheel if you want to relieve any pressure. If you're having to push for it, roll the wheel forward. If you're having to pull back on the yoke, roll the wheel backwards. I'm a little bit high right now, right? Yeah, it's just a hair. midfield downwind. When you come to the airport, let's say you're coming from the west, it'd be real easy to enter base yeah. and then final, but if you had to go to the other side and there wasn't a tower there, you'd cross over midfield to enter left downwind for runway 18. You do that in like a teardrop? You can. That's what they say. I would just go direct. I go cross uh, and then I turn left. I don't turn right. Seven Bravo, runway 36 cleared for the option. Traffic citation, mile and a quarter final. Clip the option 36, we're number 287 Bravo. He's on a quarter mile final. I don't see him. There he is. Over to the left in front. Oh, I see him. Yep, okay. Uh, he's not a factor. He's so faster you, than us, right? Yes, he's a lot faster. So even if he was just a regular airplane like us and propeller driven, piston, once you pass him on final, you can turn base now. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea because that gives him a mile head start on you. Yeah. You've got a mile to go. He's got a mile to go to the runway. By the time you turn final, he's touching down. Yeah. By the time you get to the runway, he's off. That's another reason why we try to keep about a mile back because it takes him a little time to get off the runway. So is here where you start reducing power? Uh, pull the power back to 1,700 and you can start your descent or you can just hold your altitude and let it slow down some. Yep. Belts on, fuel on both, mixture rich, carburetor heat on, landing lights on. Good. Pull the landing Any lights, lights on. on. Yep. And then uh, flaps and power as required. Okay. Yep. If you wanted to put in 10 degrees of flaps now, you could. Make sure you're going below 100. Okay. Yeah, hold up a little bit, it'll slow down. Pull back a little bit on it, it'll slow okay. down. There you go. Now put in your 10 degrees of flaps if you want. Well, let's do it after we. Okay. Or wait till you turn. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get on final, you can put in all 30 degrees if you wanted to. Let's hold our nose up a little bit. We'll keep it slower. We're going to slow it down to under 100. Okay. Yeah. Yep, keep turning. All right, now put in your flaps if you want. Yep, there's 10. Put in another 10. Yep, and then one more. 
That's all 30 degrees. I'm looking at the windsock, and I noticed the windsock's turning this way a little bit. So the wind's coming from the right to the left. You're going to have a little bit of crab angle going in, or you could do that forward slip. It's called a side slip when you've got a crosswind. So that's yeah. the only difference. Keep your airspeed up over 80. Yep, keep it up to 80. Yep, so go down. Uh -huh. yep. Either that or add some power. Okay. Yep, we can add a little bit of power. We want to keep our two white and two red, though, so we're going to have to add a little bit of power. Good. Okay. Yep. We're going to hold that right there for a second. Yeah, you can have your hand on the throttle because okay. you have to make adjustments on final. Yeah, you're either coming in too fast or too slow. It's still red. Yep, we're going to just hold this, and I think once we get to this, whatever this is, our, our mark or whatever, air mark, you can forget about the, the Bazzi lights or the Pappy lights. And now we're just going to land the airplane. We're going to keep it going down to the runway. You can pull, throttle. Yeah, pull some more power out. Uh-huh. Keep pulling it out. Is that all the way? It is now. Okay. So now we're going to touch down at 60 miles an hour. We're going to round out and just kind of hold it off the ground there until we touch down. Good. Okay. Yeah, that was a good one. So that was a short build. If you land on or near the numbers, they say within 200 feet of it, that's a short build landing. Okay. And we've been practicing those. I mean, I always teach people that. That's the first thing we learn. We're doing short build landings from day one. Because you never know. You may have to land on a short runway. Just 87 Bravo, we'll turn left Alpha 4, hold short of uh, the parallel. Left on Alpha 4 and hold short. Power or? Yeah, we'll just wait here. Okay. Yep. Oh, you want me to stop? Or? Yeah, you can stop here. Good. They needed more taxiway than we did. Yeah. Okay. Bravo, we'll give way to the <laughs> citation, then runway 36, taxi via Alpha. Taxi 36 via Alpha, it's some Bravo. All right, now you can go. Yeah. Yep, driving with your feet. So you have to tell yourself that. Remind yourself all the time. I'm driving with my feet, driving with my feet, until you get used to it and it's second nature. Yeah, it takes people a while. Now you want to take the flaps off. Carburetor heat and landing lights off. RP in, yep. landing lights off. Good. Okay. Yeah. And then they even say lean for taxi. If you wanted to, you can lean it out a little bit. That keeps from getting carbon build up on the spark okay. plugs. Yep. And then if you want to try and practice staying on the yellow line, anytime you're actually thinking about it, you're building those those nerves and those neurons in your brain that make the ganglia and the whole thought of flying. Yep. You can start building up this part of your brain like a muscle. You know, the more you work it, the bigger it gets. So why was that called short final? Oh, we landed at, a, at like a short field landing. We okay. landed at so close that we could have stopped within a short field, like 600 feet or 800 feet of runway. It takes a lot further to take off. It takes like 1,400 feet to take off. But we could, with 10 degrees of flaps, do a short field or a soft field takeoff, and we could get up off the ground sooner and accelerate and then climb out without hitting that tree at the end of the runway. Those are all things that we'll practice before you get your license. We start off doing normal takeoffs and landings, but the way that I'm training people is I'm always sitting up for landing on the numbers. Some people say, I want to land further down, and you can. Once you get your license, you can land midfield down there and get off at that exit just fine. But we're always looking at the sight picture, and we're practicing doing the short field landing. People just don't know it until they get there, and they go, oh, I've been doing this all along. Yeah. Yep. And then once you land, you start applying the brakes gently at first and pulling back on the elevator. You can stop very quickly by hitting the brakes even harder. You start applying more and more pressure, you'll stop. You just don't want to flip over doing it. It's in Bravo, hold short, 3-6. Says 7 Bravo, um, enter right traffic this time, runway 36, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, right traffic, 8-7 Bravo. All right. So this time right. we're going to make a right turn instead of left turn. Yeah. Sometimes we get out here and we do so many takeoffs and landings to the left, people get dizzy. I go, oh, man, I just want to go right one time so I can break that dizzy cycle. And you can ask for that. Say, I'd like to make right traffic if there was some reason. You know, he's doing it because there's somebody traffic over on the left side or something. Yeah. Yep. So you're going to line up on it. Whenever you're ready, give it full throttle. Keep it down the center of the runway. When you get to 60, pull back. Start to rotate. All the way in. And 
then I twist that little friction lock to hold it in once I get it all the way in there. Yep, all the way. Keep going. All the way. Okay. All the way. Now I lock that friction lock in. No, the friction lock's this little ring at the back. Oh, uh, okay. There you go. Start to pull back. Yep, pull back. keep going back. There we go. Climb out 75 to 85. You just push forward a little bit, it'll start to speed up to 75, and then start pulling back again. Keep it under 85 if you want, or keep it at 80. You can pitch for whatever airspeed you want. This is Nate 7 Bravo. You're going to be number two following the Columbia and down from the west if you want to extend your upwind about a half a mile. Okay, Roger. We'll extend upwind 8 7 Bravo. So we'll keep going. So you get to the end of this little right ridge, the ridge on the right. We'll go around that ridge. Are we going too fast right now? Yeah, pull up a little bit. You can slow it down and speed your, increase your climb rate. Pitching for 85 or 80, somewhere between 75 and 85. Okay. If you're doing 90, you pull back a little bit more and it climbs faster. Pull back a little okay. bit. Okay. Yep, pitching for 85. Yeah, next time we'll go out in the practice area and we'll practice that slowing it down to 65 or 75. 65 without flaps. Oh, 55 with flaps. We'll slow it down to where you're just getting ready to land and you're just out there tootling around at barely any lift. It's called slow flight. So he, he said extend. Extended a mile. Otherwise half we would mile. be turning right right now. Exactly, okay. yeah. Right over here by these antennas is a mile from the runway, so we could turn right either before or after the antennas. But we're going to go out to the end of this little ridge and okay. go around it, and that's going to give them enough time for that Columbia to land. Okay. We won't have to slow down. I don't think we have to slow down anyway. Those things are so fast. So if you want to, you can pull the power back if you're at 2,400 already. Or keep climbing, pull the nose up a little bit. 85 is what we're pitching for. There you go. Then when you get to 24, push the nose up a little bit and pull the power back to 2,200 RPMs. Okay. When you extend your upwind, you're not climbing on crosswinds. Yeah, you could. I mean, okay. I mean you could. But you're always climbing until you get to 2,400, whether you're upwind or crosswind okay. or downwind. You may even be climbing when you're downwind still. Okay. Yep, you can start your right turn now. And we're going to level off here about 2300. 8, 7, Bravo, you can go ahead and start your crosswind. Crosswind 87 Bravo. Yeah. Yep, we're going to level off. Good. So you kind of get used to that. What does level look like or what does it feel like? You can tell this little dot on the horizon, or you can tell by where the cowling is on the horizon outside the airplane. Now, when we're working the other runway, 1-8, we'll be coming downwind on this side, and we would turn over this ridge. Right about this little highway here underneath us is about a mile away. Go ahead and start your downwind. Yep, I feel like we're going too fast. Yeah, I'm going to pull a bit more power right. out. If you notice you're going too fast, pull a little bit of power out or pull the nose up a little bit. I think you got enough altitude, though, so it's the power is all we need. It's a combination sometimes of both, pitch and power. Good. Now, this little highway is about a mile away. That's 265 that goes from Rogers to Fayetteville. Takes a little jog over there and comes out this way. trim up a little bit, right? So we're losing altitude? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. Roll the wheel backwards. That pulls the nose up a little bit. Yep. And then if you need to add power, if you go below 80, just add a little bit of power. Okay. Uh-huh. Notice there's a few antennas on these hills. Okay. Yep. I try to go between them. You know, I don't go right over the top of the antenna. Oh, go between them right over I here? I would. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Or you can stay over the highway over here. Either way. There's the runway. We're about a mile away. That's what we're looking for. That thousand feet up and a mile away. And as soon as we get a beam of it, we can say that we were right downwind. Right down uh -huh. yeah. yep. If you're making right turns, it's right traffic. If you're making left turns, it's left traffic. So you just have to think about it. Oh, I'm on the left side now because I'm making right traffic. I was on the right side of the airport making left traffic. People get that confused. And that's usually only for tower traffic where it switches, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's always left traffic. Yeah. Almost every airport is left traffic. If you go to 
Four flight, you can tell the R and the L and option the Columbia's uh, mile south. Flip the option three six eight seven Bravo. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Clear five four. Have the L and the R in the sectional. And you're clear. In the sectional, yeah. For left and right flight departure. Yeah. Well, it'll tell you on the sectional or on four flight. Expect flight level two four. If you look under the runway, like the airport. Departure frequency will be one six point six. Squawk zero seven three one. It'll even tell you which one is preferred. Like here, I clicked on runway. I'm sitting on Drake Field, but if you had okay, Springdale in there. Be the Spring 5, then is filed to maintain. Runway 1634. It'll have a little green arrow on the one that's preferred because of the wind. But there's no wind, so either one is preferred. Well, with the 3 6, Charlie, go. Yeah. Go ahead and make your right turn. All right. We do. If we do shallow turns for. You can do a medium. You can okay. do a medium. I wouldn't do a steep in the pattern. Yeah. yeah. 30 degrees is probably the most that you need. A little bit of right rudder if you need it. Yep. Make it coordinated. As you turn to the right, you usually need a little bit more than you do to the left because of the left turning tendencies of the airplane. Uh, yep. Columbia Zero Bravo Lima taxi to park. Pull the power day. back to 1700. Start your descent. About 500 feet per minute. Okay, we're looking down here. Uh -huh. Okay. Seat belts. Depot. Gas on both. Mixture Gas. rich. Push that one in. The mixture rich. Mixture rich. Pull the carburetor heat out. Carb heat out. And landing lights. Landing light on. Good. So okay. 87 Bravo. Plan left traffic on the go. On the go. Left traffic. 87 Bravo. Okay. Start final now. Uh-huh. Yep. We're going to slow it down some more if you want to. Hold your altitude here. You can still do your bank turn, but we're just slowing it down to make sure we're below 100. Okay. Five zero here here is inbound visual three six. There's another get ready to take off. off. Hold short traffic on a mile final. Yes, sir. Holding short of 36, Charlie Go. Baron 50, Sierra, Sierra, Springdale Tower. Good morning, runway 36. We can do a go around this time. That way we won't tie up the runway. Okay. Airspeed below 100, you can put your flaps in. Runway 36, 50, Yep, just hold the nose up a little bit so it doesn't speed up. Good, there's 10. Put go all the way. Uh, yeah, go ahead and put another 10. Another one. Yeah. One more. Yep, and we're watching our airspeed. Make sure we're over 80. Either push the nose down because we've got some extra altitude. Okay. Yep, or add power. We want to keep it up around 80 until we get there. Yeah, you don't want to land right here. <laughs> push down the nose a little bit. To keep your airspeed up over 70 or add power. And this time, we're going to go around. We're not going to land. I'm going to say, okay, there's a... Air, a fuel truck on the runway. We're going to go around. Yeah. So we're going to still line up on the center and everything, but at the very end, we're going to give it full power, take the carburetor heat off. Yeah, okay, there's a fuel truck on the runway. Give it full throttle. Yeah. Full throttle. Yep. And then, Fire heat. that's not full oh. yet. All the way in. All the way yep. in. Carburetor heat cold. There's five Charlie Golf, cross three six, Bravo five. Take Good off the flaps Charlie 10 degrees at a time. Okay. But make sure your airspeed's over 60. Yep. Okay. That's it. It's in Bravo going around. There you go. So you take off the flaps one notch at a time and let it speed up a little bit between them. Stay over the runway. Just 87 Bravo, Roger, and your left traffic. Left traffic, 87 Bravo. Yep. That's it. Climb at 85 if you want, or 75. Keep the wings level. Yeah, you're starting to learn, anticipating, correcting for yep. that nose up or nose down, left or right, if you feel like you're starting to turn a little bit, you dig back in, you got to fight that wind when it starts to push you off course. Yeah. That's it, you're yeah, reacting. I'm going to go off around the corner without delay, runway 36, cleared for takeoff, traffic's a barren two mile final. Okay, without delay, we're on the roll. Five, Charlie, go. Oh, uh, we're going to turn left. Uh, you said left. Go ahead and start your left turn, that jet's getting ready to take off behind us. I usually turn left 10 degrees or something to give them the airway so they can go straight out. We're so close, you could go ahead and start turning crosswind. Yep. And this will be the last one. Good practice. Yep, go ahead and start turning downwind. All right. Downwind. Pull power when we get to 23. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep.
You can pull a little bit of power out now if you want, yeah. Clear five try again off contact departure, we'll see you. Yeah, when you get the 700 feet above the ground, you can start pulling the power back and start your turn out to the crosswind, which is about 1,900 or 2,000 feet above sea level. Yep, level off here if you want. Good. And if you want to use that trim wheel, you can roll it forward a little bit. Just 87 Bravo, extend down when I'll call your base turn. Looks like you're going to be number three for the runway. Hey, we'll extend down when 87 Bravo. Yeah, we'll pull the power back some more, 2,200 or 2,000. There's no sense of getting in a hurry. We're just going to have to go downwind even further. Yeah. So keep pulling back on it. Yep, and hold your altitude here. Yep, reduced power means you got to pull up a little bit on it to get the same amount of lift. If you were going as fast as you could go, the nose might be partly down even, looking like you're going down, but you're hauling ass, holding yep. the altitude. If you're going really slow, you're going to be tilted up a little bit more to get more wind. Uh, that more relative wind. He said we're three, so there should be two in front of us, right? Uh-huh, yep. Baron zero, 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 taxi to park this frequency. One of them's on the ground. You to parking, five, zero, three, right there. There may be two more out here, though. Springdale Tower, Skyhawk 281 on Quebec is three and a half miles to the southeast. And now for full stop landing with the weather. Scott, 100 Quebec, Springdale Tower, runway 36, cleared to land. Runway 36, cleared to land, 100 Quebec. Uh, we're closer than he is. Oh well. Cessna 87, Bravo, well, you're following Cessna traffic at uh, 9.30 to 10 o'clock at a mile and a half. 87, Bravo, traffic in sight. Cessna 87, Bravo, follow the Cessna on base, runway 36, cleared for the option. If the option will be a full stop, 87, Bravo. Alright. Are we good to go to base? Yeah, you can turn left. Okay. We're I, watch, we're I still watch. don't have him in sight. Yeah, he's over there, just off our left wing. There he is, see him? He's right there. Ah, yeah. He's diving to get in there. That means he'll be going fast. I should have stayed downwind. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, yeah, either way. Stage 7, Bravo, the wind zero four zero at 6. So at 6, that's, that's a crosswind? Yeah, zero four zero. It's coming out of the northeast at 6 miles an hour. Uh-huh. Now you can turn now base. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can't see his lights at all. Uh. Yeah, go ahead and start turning okay. final. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's about a mile ahead of us. And he's a Skyhawk, too, right? Uh huh. about as much uh, clearance as you want between yeah, them. Yeah, about okay. a mile. That's what we want. Can we start pulling power? Or? You can. Uh -huh. yeah, we're almost there. We were just idling pretty much. We are just uh, okay. slow cruise. Yeah, we're already at 70 miles an hour. Yeah, I was watching that airspeed. I was like, okay. Yep. Yep, you want to you put in the flaps. Yep, as you're putting in the flaps, you push the nose down a little bit because it makes you tilt the nose up. It's an attitude, the yeah. aircraft attitude. Go ahead and put in another 10 if you want. Yep, and the last 10. So that's going to slow us down a little bit and give us a little bit more time, him in front of us and all. We're watching for him to touch down, and then once he exits the runway, then we can use the runway. We don't want to crowd him too much. Yep, start your descent down. I see him. He's right over the runway now. He just touched down, or he's about to. He's slow. Yep. So we're too high. Right. The lights. Uh -huh. They're all white, so we're too high. You want to descend a little bit faster until you capture that bassy. 
Yep, keep pushing down. You can speed up to 80 or whatever down. Well, we're going to go about 1,000 feet per minute descent, so we capture the bass. If we keep it at 500, we'll never capture it, so okay. you've got to increase your rate of descent. There you go. Hold it to about 1,000 until we, there we go. go. There's one red. Uh-huh. Says to 100 Quebec taxi to parking this frequency. Over no, to the good. right a little bit. Yep, that wind's pushing you to the left. Taxi to park this frequency, one not Quebec. I'm yeah. having to push down pretty hard. That's okay. Yeah, use that wheel to, to roll it forward if you want, or just push forward. There we go. So we've got two reds, two whites. Yep, that's what we want. And we've got more of a crosswind now. Even though the wind's not blowing very hard, it is more coming directly across the runway. So we want to have it. Let me take it for a okay. second. We want to use our left aileron to hold it over the runway. And the, the right rudder, or right aileron, left rudder, it's called cross control. Okay. But you always have your thumbs into the wind a little bit. If the wind's blowing that way, you got your thumbs into the wind. Now it's straightened out. I'm watching the wind sock. Yep. The wind sock says it's straightened out. So this would be easier for you to land now if you want to go ahead and take it okay. again. And, and we're just going to slow it down. Pull the rest of the power out if you want. Yeah. And then round out. We're going to hold it over the runway and let it touch down really gently. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to beat this guy if we get up here to turn off. He went, he went way down. down. Huh? You use brakes now? Yep, you can yep. use the brakes to okay. slow it down and then turn off on this first exit. It's in Bravo, like Taxi Park. This is 87 Bravo, Taxi to Parking, this frequency. We'll see you. Thanks with you. Thanks, 87 Bravo. Yep. So once you cross this double yellow line, you can line up like you're going towards the hangar, take off okay. the flaps, the carburetor heat, and the landing lights. Flaps off. Yep. I did it. Okay. Then landing lights. Then landing lights. All right. Yep, you're steering with your feet. you yeah. got to use that right rudder to turn right. I'm watching you. I'm helping you. Because <laughs> I know it's easy to miss. People, it takes them a couple of weeks usually to get used to that driving with your feet. If you had a simulator at home and you could practice driving around with your feet, that would help. It's We've got one in the hangar. If you want to use it anytime, you're welcome to use it and practice driving around or taking off and landing. Yeah. It's, it's good practice. It is different in person, though. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hands-on. You're right. But definitely practice driving with your feet, you know. I wish there was a video game at home that people had that they could practice driving with their feet, you know. If you had a simulator, you could do that. A lot of people do. I know a lot of people that do have those simulators now at home. That's it. You're driving with your feet. Yep. And if you have to turn even sharper, you can use that brake a little bit. Yeah. Step on that right brake, and it'll turn even sharper than 45 degrees. You can hold the brake and just pivot and go around in a circle if you had to. You are the second? Yep. Okay. Yep, second driveway on the right. Does the cars have to give right away to us? Uh-huh, they okay. do. Yep. And that's one of the uh, Springdale maintenance people. Springdale Tower, uh, Command 7390 Papa at the FBO, ready to taxi with weather. Add a little bit of power as you're going into the turn. Command 7390 out of it. Springdale Tower, runway 36, taxi via Alpha. Yep. 36 via Alpha. Where do you normally park? I'll take it. Okay. I usually turn to the right here, and then I just push it straight back. Uh, Sky Raider 3330, Charlie Springdale Tower. Sky Raider. Springdale Tower 330, Charlie. Go ahead. Next your mags yes, and master. I'm just going to update you on the weather. Uh, Rogers is now reporting oh. to... Master off. Yep. Okay. Mixture, magnetos in the master. And then you can turn this one off before they start it next time. They should turn the avionics off, but okay. it doesn't start with the M, so I don't okay. say that. <laughs> so it's easy to remember. Mixture, mags, and master. Okay. Yeah. Mixture kills the engine by starving it for fuel. Magnetos means it won't start back up again with the magnetos off. Yeah. And then the master shuts everything off. Okay. All right.